Hello world, Noah here. In this video, I wanted to address an interesting issue uh, that came up in my computer science class the other day that has to deal with for loops and scope in Python. I've tried to recreate uh, maybe a little bit of a simpler version uh, of the issue here uh, that captures all of the subtleties of the, uh, of the question that we're dealing with. So essentially, I've declared uh, first up here a person class class which represents a person. It's a very simple class. It just has uh, a name and an age, and we store those values here um, in the init uh, function. And then in the string function, we just basically uh, say whatever the name of the person is and whatever their age is in a nice little formatted string like that. You can imagine that this is like a simplified version of a more involved person class, maybe the more involved one has more data, it has some extra methods in it, whatever it could be. Uh, but this is just a very simple version. And then here we have, uh, we have uh, a list of persons, which I'm calling people, and we have five elements in there. We have uh, Noah, 19, uh, so name is Noah, age is 19, Nick, 19, Kennedy, 20, Vahan, 18, and Brian, 19. So we have five people in there with names and ages. And then here we wrote this method, called uh, find person, which takes a name and it basically tries to find the person who has that name. And it's a very simple code. Uh, I basically say uh, we loop through each person in this uh, in this array. And then we say if the person's name is the name that we're looking for, we break out of the for loop. And then outside of the for loop, we return person. And so if you look at this code, you may be a little confused. And especially if you usually program in another language like I don't know Java or C++ or, or, or most other languages, to be honest, uh, you might say, well, okay, person was defined in the for loop, right? So, um, so that's strange uh, that you're referencing it outside of the for loop. And in fact, you get this uh, message from PyCharm that says local variable, local variable person, uh, you know, might be referenced before assignment. You may not have uh, created this variable before you're trying to use it here. Uh, and so the question, first of all, is does this code work? So in order to test it, um, I'm basically calling find person with Noah and then with Vahan. So it should be able to find both of these. Noah is uh, the first element at index zero and Vahan is the fourth element at index three. So it should have no problem. It should basically find uh, Noah and then print the string representation, which is defined here, and then Vahan, or it could give an error if we're trying to use person and person doesn't exist. So, uh, so if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it actually does work, and it works exactly how we expect it to. Uh, when I search for Noah, it finds uh, the person with name Noah and age 19, and then we search for Vahan, it finds Vahan with age 18. So interesting, it does, uh, it does actually work. So uh, let's just go into a sidebar. Let's take a look at uh, some simplified examples, and then we'll come back and explain exactly why this particular example works. We're going to talk a little bit about scope in Python. OK, so, uh, so if we take a look at the actual Python documentation itself, we can sort of get a hint as to what's going on here. So according to the documentation right here, uh, we can see that a block is a piece of uh, Python program text that is executed as a unit. And the blocks are defined as a module, a function body, and a class definition. Now, in most other programming languages, uh, a block is a lot more than that. It could be an if statement and a for loop and a while loop. All of those different things could be considered blocks in Python, but or in other languages, sorry. But in Python, we consider a module, a function body, and a class definition to be blocks, right? And a scope defines the visibility of a name within a block. So this is the classic concept of scope, basically saying where does a variable exist and where does a variable not exist. And we're saying that the, the scope uh, of a variable is within its block. Uh, but we just need to keep in mind that Python has sort of a strange or at least a different concept of what a block is. So let's go back to our code for a second. Let's write a very simple, uh, very simple example. So we're going to loop over uh, this list, one, two, three. So for x in one, two, three. And um, let's just not do anything at all. We're just going to loop. So x is going to be one, and it's not going to do anything. x is going to be two, 
and it's not going to do anything. And then x is going to be 3, and it's not going to do anything. Now, outside of here, I can go ahead, and I'm going to print out x. And we do get this warning um, here that uh, says name x cannot be defined, like it you know, can't find the name x. But if we run this, x will have a value of 3. And the reason why is, of course, because Python's scope works based off of blocks. And essentially, this file, sample.py, is the block. This is not inside of a module. It's not inside of a, uh, a class definition. It's not inside of a function. So the scope is this file, this code file. And so even though x is declared for this for loop, it's actually really declared in the scope of this file. So I can use x outside of there. Let's do something else. Let's say uh, inside of here, instead of doing nothing, I'm going to create this variable called d, and it's going to be equal to x times x, so x squared, essentially. Um, so basically, the first time this runs, x will be 1, and d would be 1, then x would be 2, and d would be 4, x would be 3, uh, and d would be 9. And so if I go and print this, and I go and print d, then it will print out 9, which uh, is what you'd expect based off the behavior of x. So x exists uh, in this scope. It exists outside of the for loop because it's defined in the scope of this file, right? And d exists even though it's defined inside of the for loop. That's not a scope. The for loop is not the scope. The scope is the whole file. So it still exists here. Now, of course, this example is kind of silly because when x is 1 and when x is 2, we basically ignore the values of x and d, and we only uh, use it you know, when, uh, when x is 3 and then d would be 9. So it's kind of a trivial example, but it demonstrates the idea, the important idea um, that scope is defined uh, a little more broadly here than in other languages. Uh, there are some caveats, though, that we, should, that we should talk about. So here's another example. For y in an empty list, we're going to say e is y times y. So it's basically the same as above, but instead of the list being 1, 2, 3, uh, it's just an empty list, right? And then we're going to print out y, and we're going to print out e. And so if we run this, we'll get 3 and 9 from before, but then we get this error that the name y is not defined. And if I comment that out to let the next line run, we get the error that the name e is not defined. So we know that both y and e are not defined. And the reason is because since this list uh, is empty, there are no elements for y to become. Uh, so y never gets defined. If, if I put an element in here, y would become the first element, and then the second and the third. But if there's nothing for y to become, then y never gets uh, you know, declared. And of course, the body of the loop will never run since there's nothing for it to run. So e will also never be declared. So you kind of have to be careful here. If you're trying to take advantage of this uh, strange scoping, you have to know that if the list is empty, this variable will not be declared. Uh, so for example, in this for right here, we know that x will take on the values 1, 2, and 3. But if this list were returned from a function somewhere else that had a chance of returning an empty list, then there's a chance that x could never be defined. And we're assuming here that x is defined. So it's kind of a dangerous, uh, a dangerous game to play, because if you don't know that the loop is going to run, then you don't know that the uh, that the index variable is going to be created, um, and then you can't just assume uh, that it was created. Uh, but the important thing to keep in mind uh, is that the scope here is the whole file. Just to just to show you, uh, if I define, let's make a function called f, and we're going to set uh, the variable uh, h equal to two, and then if I make um, another function called g and I want to print out h, uh, this will not work regardless of what I do. I could call f first, and then I could call g. Let's just comment out that bad code above there. Uh, it's going to tell me h is not defined there. I could even call, uh, I could call f inside of g. So I'm creating h, and then I'm printing it, whatever. But whatever I do, it's not going to work. And as we know, a function is a scope. A function provides a scope, or it has its own scope. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm declaring h in the scope of this function. And then here, when I try to reference h, I'm not in the scope of, uh, of f, so I can't access this variable. So that works in the way that you would expect from another language, that functions have their own scopes. Uh, but what doesn't work, as you would expect, is that for loops 
actually, you could think of them as sort of leaking their scope, but really a for loop doesn't have a different scope. Its scope is, you know, just the whole file. Uh, and then of course, uh, you know, if I were to declare, um, you know, i equals 10 outside of here, I can still access i from inside of either of these functions because um, i is defined in a higher scope. So basically when I go to print i, it's going to look in the scope of f, and it doesn't see any variable called i there, so it's going to look above in the scope of this file, and then it will find i there. So this will actually work with i, but it will not work with h because it's in a separate scope uh, in f than in g. There's no shared scope there. Now this property uh, allows you to sort of create a closure in Python, and a closure is essentially um, a construct where all of the variables are contained. It's sort of closed, as the name implies. Um, so essentially, you know, up here we have x, uh, which is inside of this for loop, but x also exists everywhere else in this file, from, you know, from line one where it's declared all the way down to the bottom of the file, x exists. But if you were to sort of wrap x inside of a function, then it would only exist inside of that one, uh, that one function. And that will enable you to sort of separate things. Now, in general, it's not really much of an issue, um, so we don't worry about it. But there are cases where it does matter, and then in that case, uh, you could use a closure. But we could talk about that in a separate video. Hopefully, that makes a little bit more sense. So let's go back to our example here and take a look. We know here that we're inside of a function, right? So this function is going to have its own scope. And inside of the scope of this function, we have this parameter called name, uh, we have this variable called person, and we have people, which comes from the scope above it. So it still exists inside of the function because it comes from uh, right above the function, which is uh, still within the scope of the function. Right, so what we do uh, is essentially we say, uh, we're looping through each person, checking the name, and then if the name is, is uh, equal to the name we're looking for, we break. And then when we go to return the person outside of here, we know that this variable person exists within the scope of this function. To be clear, it doesn't exist outside. So if I try to print person out here, it doesn't exist out here. It only exists inside of the function. But if we're inside of the function, uh, then it exists everywhere inside of the function after it's declared. So when we go to return it, that's the reason why it works. Uh, because basically, this person is declared in the scope of the function and not the scope of the for loop because the for loop doesn't have its own scope. There is one issue here. First of all, it's a little confusing to look at this and, and understand, but there's actually a major issue with doing something like this. Let's try to find a person named Ben. Now we can clearly look and see that Ben is not in this list anywhere. Um, so you can take a moment to guess what might happen. Uh, but if I run it, it's going to tell me uh, Brian. It's going to give me the result for Brian. Name Brian, age 19. Now why did it do this? I think the answer kind of makes sense, right? Uh, we're looking for a person named Ben, uh, and we're looping through all of these people in here. So we start with Noah, that's not the right name, Nick, wrong name, Kennedy, wrong name, Vahan, wrong name, and Brian, wrong name. So essentially, we never break out of the for loop, and the for loop just ends naturally after looking through all of the people. Now at the very end of the for loop, the value of person is the last person that we checked, right? Which would be Brian, so we return Brian. In the case of Noah, for example, it's going to check the first person and see that it's Noah, and it's going to break. So person would have the value of Noah, because we haven't you know, moved on to the next person. And for Vahan, we check Noah, Nick, Kennedy, then we get to Vahan, and we break while person is still equal to Vahan up here, so that works. But in the case of Ben, or any string other than the ones uh, that are actually in the list, it's going to go through everyone, and it's going to end at the last person, and uh, since it never breaks, person, this variable, will still have the value of the last element in people, and it's going to return that. This doesn't make any sense, right? Because if I'm looking for someone named Ben, there's no reason why it should give me a person named Brian. So we can fix this easily, and in doing so, we can actually make the code a lot more clear. Instead of breaking when we find the person, let's just return the person immediately. As soon as we find the person, we're going to just give the value back and, uh, and be done. 
And in the case where we exhaust all of the options, you know, we have a couple of options. We could return uh, none, which I think makes the most sense. You could throw an error if that makes sense, but uh, I think in general it wouldn't. Uh, or you could do some other behavior, but I think it makes the most sense to return none. And the cool thing about a function in Python is that if you don't specify return value, it'll return none by default. So we don't actually need to write this. We can just get rid of it. We can make the code, first of all, a lot simpler to read and also a little bit shorter. I think this is very clear. We loop through each person, and if we find the person uh, with the matching name, then we return them immediately. You could add the return none if you want, just to make it even more clear, but uh, you can assume that if it goes through and doesn't find the person, it's just not going to return a person. And if we run this, you'll see that instead of giving Brian, it now gives none, which makes sense, right? Because Ben is not actually in our list of people, so there's no reason why it should return someone that is. So I hope this explanation made some sense. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. The question came up in computer science, uh, in my computer science class. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, student was confused as to why, uh, you know, this variable, this variable like x would exist outside of the scope and why the code worked. Um, so that's the reason why. But also the implementation uh, that was provided that used the break and return at the end also has that fatal flaw um, that is definitely worth pointing out. So I hope that all made sense, uh, you know, respond in the comments, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.